Diane Brown and prayer by Minister Dennison. And thank you for remaining standing. Amen. I'll be coming from the book of Joshua, the 14th chapter, from the 4th to the 14th verse. And I'll give you a few minutes for those who got the technology to look it up on their phone. Give you a minute. All right. Joshua, the 14th chapter, 4th to the 14th verse. The fourth verse reads For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. Therefore, they gave no part unto the Levites in the land, save cities to dwell in with their suburbs, for the cattle and for the substance. As the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, The man of God concerning me, indeed, in Kadeshibah. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadeshibah to a spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren, that sent up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore unto that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, ever since the Lord spake this word unto Moses. While the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet I am as crowned this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then. Even so is my strength now, for war both to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me the mountain whereof the Lord spat in that day. For thou he hearest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and faint. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord says. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh, Hebrew for an inheritor. 14 and last verse says, Hebron therefore became the inheritor of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Canaanite, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Thank God for the word of God, Joshua chapter 14, the 4th to the 14th verse in your reading. May 
God bless you. Good morning. Let me bow our heads. Father God, it's just in the name of Jesus that we come right now. Give me your thanks and honor and praise. And my line down last night was an endeavor. Give us breath in our body. Father, we ask that you come to your throne right now, Lord. Ask that you examine our hearts. Anything that is not like you, we ask that you take it out, Lord. And Lord, and Lord, when the man of God comes to plant the word, it will be able to hold in our hearts right now, Lord. As the word said, one plant, one water, but you give the increase. But Father, we ask that you increase in our life right now. Anything that the enemy has took out. So, Lord, we just thank you and give you praise and honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Amen. To God be all of the glory. How many of you don't want the Lord to pass you by? I mean, for real, for real. When the Lord is in the building, you don't want him to pass you by. And just because he's not in the building, you can be in your house, you can be in your car, you can be in the mall and Walmart on aisle seven. If Jesus show up, you don't want him to pass you by, amen? Amen, because he's just not confined to the building but he is confined wherever you are because wherever you are, the church is. How about that? So we thank God, we thank God, we thank God. By way of announcement, our first announcement, we are going to have some representatives. There is a new school in the North Charleston area, a new charter school that's in the North Charleston area. And what we want is good schools for our children. Amen? So what we're going to do is we're going to have the representatives come to this mic. Dennison, we'll get this mic pulled out further for them. And we're going to have them come. And they're going to take three minutes to talk to us about the new school. And parents, we should get excited about schools for our children. We should get real excited about schools for our children. We should get excited about any school that want to invest in our children's future. We really, really need to. First on my list, besides God, because he on a list by himself, is education. Well, let me switch it. It's voting and then education. And that's one thing that we, as our community, we need to get more involved in. And we don't need to get involved after something happens. We need to get involved on the ground floor. Amen? So we're going to have them come and introduce to you this new charter school that's happening in the area. So for those of you who may not have children but have grandchildren or your neighbor have children, Please listen attentively because we just don't want you to hear it. We want you to pass the information on. Amen? So we'd like for them to come at this time. Okay. Pastor Holt said they will also be in the lobby after services passing out information in reference to the new school. Well, thank you all for having us. Thank you all. Good morning. My name is Carrie Ann T. Thomas, also known, and known as KTT. I am the CEO of Movement Schools. My name is Deanna Bruce, and I'm the regional superintendent for North Charleston. My name is Tina Carter. I'm the director of student enrollment and recruitment. Good morning. I'm Jamie Sumter. I'm the compliance director for Movement Schools. Janika Mullen. I am the superintendent for the Charlotte region. Good morning. I'm Jermaine Gasway, and I'm the superintendent for the Raleigh region. Good morning. Alexandra Graham, and I'm the director of operations for the North Charleston Movement Campus. Good morning. I'm Leticia Dowd, and I'm the chief financial officer for Movement Schools. So in front of you is our entire executive team as well as our North Charleston team as well. So this is our first time actually coming to church together because we live in different regions, right? Like I actually live in Atlanta, they're in Charlotte, like we live in different regions. So this is our first time attending church together. So I just feel so blessed just, just to even have that experience with my team. But just to tell you a little bit more about Movement Schools, we are a free charter school located all in Charlotte, North Carolina. Currently, right now, we serve pre-K, we have three pre-K sites in Charlotte, four elementary schools, as well as a middle school. As we continue and look to, towards the future, our goal is to really focus on pre-K and elementary. So we are very excited that we are going to open up our first campus in a new region here in North Charleston. Just to share a little bit more about our mission, at Movement Schools, we exist to love and value our scholars and our communities. 
In partnership with our families, we work to close generational gaps through self-efficacy, access to world-class instruction, and financial education. Right, and we're doing that in pre-K, Pastor. We're doing that in pre-K. We're not just focused on the high quality instruction and rigor, yes, that is 100% what we are focused on, and we're also thinking about the whole child experience, like what is their day to day? Do they love being in school? Do they see themselves when they open up their books? Do they see themselves when they look at their teachers? Do they see themselves when they look at their leaders? That is also what we are about. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be smart, talented, and gifted? Actually, who are you not to be? These are words that we have our scholars repeat and recite every single Friday because we want them to know that regardless of your race, regardless of your background, regardless of where you have come from, that is not the end goal. God has his hands on you. That is not the end goal. And when we do that, when we show our deep belief in our kids, when we show our deep belief in our community, as a CEO, there are people that are saying to me, your job is to shake hands with politicians. My job is to knock on doors for the kids and the families that I serve. Because we operate that way, when you look at the schools that we serve in Charlotte, when you compare our schools, movement schools, to schools that are serving a similar demographic, movement schools is outperforming those schools two times the rate. Because we believe in our kids. That's it. That's it. So we are so excited that we are going to bring that. But in order for that to work, we need you all. We need the community. We need to let them know that, yes, we're coming, but we're a different group. We're about this life for real. We show up, we knock on doors, we will be present. Thank you. So that's my CEO. <laughs> um, we are also really excited to start off, we will have kindergarten and first grade next year. So if you know a kindergartner or a student that will be five before September 1st, or a first grader that may be interested in joining movement school, please come and find us after service and we are welcome to come and talk to you a little bit more about the curriculum and the things that we offer. Every year we will be scaling up. So we have kinder and first grade this year. The following year it'll be kinder through second grade, kinder through third, and eventually we will be kinder through fifth and hopefully also offering a pre-K program. Um, a few other notes, we are, we really do believe in giving back to our community. So when we have vendors come out, when we do like, you know, snow cones for our students or when we're celebrating students, we wanna make sure that we are giving back to the community and that we have community vendors that are coming in and hosting that. So if you are a vendor of some sort, uh, maybe you know somebody who runs like a sports program or face painting, whatever that might be um, that serves kids, please let us know because we wanna make sure that we are also utilizing our community and that they show up and can show out for our students and our families. And we have career opportunities. So feel free to go onto our website. If you know someone who's into education or interested in a career in education, I am also would love to talk to you all after service about that as well. Um, so thank you, thank you all for welcoming us. Yes, we are at 4275 Bridgeview in North Charleston, so that's not too far away. We're about five or six miles away from this particular campus. Um, we do plan to have bus transportation for students within a five mile vicinity of the campus. Um, so please, if this is something you're interested in, um, let us know and we will be happy to talk after service. Thank you. Wow, we thank you so, so very much for that information. And I tell you what, I see why you a CEO, you a go-getter. For real, for real, and that's what we need. In order to get things done, we need somebody that's not afraid, that's going to speak up and stand on what they believe. And we believe that our children are the future. We believe that our children, our ch and that's all children, that's all children. We believe that if we put it in them, well, I believe that if you put, them, put it in them while they're young, they'll grow up with it in them, amen? So we thank you, we thank you so, so very much. By way of announcements, we'd like to announce that 
uh, Brother Joe Randolph's daughter-in-law, Sharika Randolph, who was in a very bad car accident in Columbia, is now at home recuperating. And we thank God. We thank God for those of you that pray. Prayer goes where you can't. Prayer goes where money can't. So we thank God for the prayers of the righteous that availeth much. Even though she has a long way to go, she is still here. So we thank God for that. We'd like for you to keep our trustee, Ollie O'Neill, McNeil, and his family lifted up in prayer. He laid his father to rest on yesterday, and we are just asking that you continue to pray for them. And Mr. John Shavers, the brother of our member, Doretha Shavers Green, and the uncle of uh, Jasmine Shavers, Shanine Green, and Danielle Todd, the cousin of Kathy Bowie, Sharon Ricks, and Maria Kennedy, will be funeralized on Tuesday at Dickerson's Mortuary. We ask that you keep that family lifted in prayer as they go through that season of bereavement. And Teresa Cook Scott, who's a member here, and Walter Scott are requesting prayers from the church for Mary B. Thompson, who is the beloved sister of Sister Scott and the sister-in-law of Brother Scott. Mary Thompson is currently under hospice's care at her son's home in Beaufort, South Carolina. They're asking that we keep them lifted up in prayer. And I always say, like we were taught as a little child at the end of your prayer, Lord bless everybody in the whole wide world. You don't have to know the name, but when you say bless everybody in the whole wide world, guess what? You include me, and I include you. So we ask that you keep them lifted up in prayer. It's their time now. It could be our time by the time we get out of church. That's just how fast things happen. At this time, I have the opportunity to make this announcement before we go to the media announcement. On the first Sunday in May, our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Isaac J. Holt Jr. would have been our pastor for 31 years. <laughs> Y'all can do better than that. 31 years. 31 years. And I am putting it out early. Seek the Lord about planting a seed in our first family. He didn't ask me to say that. I'm saying it because I got the mic and I can. But let me tell you something. Can you imagine all the sermons, all the funerals, all the weddings, all the prayers that he has done on our behalf? That deserves a thank you. That deserves a thank you. He has labored with us through some rough times and rough seasons in our lives. And for 30 of those years, God has kept him. He had. Pastor, I'm going to say this, and y'all know Pastor never really took a vacation. He would be gone one Sunday. Rev, that ain't a vacation. If he go two Sundays in a row, by the third Sunday, he is going into a panic attack. He's always been here with us. If y'all could go back and look, Pastor Holt has always been here. You deserve a vacation. You deserve a vacation. And I say that because he has been that for us. And y'all know y'all take vacation on y'all job. I sure did. But I say that to say God chooses pastors after his own heart. And we got a pastor after God's heart. So just keep that in mind. It'll be coming the first Sunday in May. I'll be coming, making announcements leading up to that time. Amen? Amen. At this time, our media announcements. Attention class of 2024 kindergarten, high school, college, and postgraduates, please go to Royals website and fill out the graduation forms 
Royals graduation celebration will be held Saturday, June 15th. Are you prepared for retirement? Because it's closer than you think. Join us for a transformative wellness on Wednesdays on April 24th at 6.30 p.m. Dive into Journey to Your Incredible Financial Success and Retirement Lifestyle with Shatika Husser, a retirement consultant with over 26 years of investment expertise. Shatika will share her comprehensive strategies for achieving financial security and a tax-free retirement. Register now at www.wellnessonwednesdays.com to secure your spot in this life-changing workshop. Attention parents, please remember that we have youth church every first, second, and third Sunday during the 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. services. Registration for youth church is held in the education building lobby. Get ready for the Royal Summer Academy 2024 happening June 24th through July 26th for rising first through sixth graders. There will be a number of summer activities, including academic enrichment, field trips, arts and crafts, yoga, and more. Also, lunch and snacks will be provided. $500 will be due prior to start. And for more information, you can contact RSA at theroyalfoundation.org. The Royal Summer Academy is now hiring and we're looking for you to join our team. We currently have open positions for teachers at $25 per hour and teacher assistant positions for $20 per hour. You can send your resume today to rsa at theroyalfoundation.org. Make sure you visit theroyalfoundation.org for more information. It is offering time in the house of the Lord, and there are three ways that you could give. You can give online at www.royalmbc.org. You can come by our church office Monday through Friday from 10 to 3, and you could stop by the office, which is 4761 Luella Avenue. For those of you who in-house that may need an offering envelope, if you raise your hands, the ushers will make sure that you get an offering envelope, and at the end of service in the vestibule, the trustees will be there to take up your offering. Remember, you can't beat God's given, no matter how you try. Amen? You just can't do it. Are there any first-time visitors at Royal today? We'd like for you to stand. On behalf of our senior pastor, and I'd like for you to remain standing because the ushers have something that they want to give to you. So on behalf of our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Isaac J. Holt Jr., we welcome you to Royal and the Royal Experience. We experience God in this service. Amen. Not church as usual. We just let the Holy Ghost have his way. For those of you by social media, we also welcome you and hope that this experience is life-changing for you. Please remain standing after the singing of this choir that, that I helped mess up the last song. After the singing of this choir, our sanctuary choir, the preacher will be our very own Reverend Dr. Isaac J. Holt, Jr.
God, my God, my God. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Woo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My hope is built. I don't know where your hope is, but my hope is built on nothing, nothing less than Jesus' blood. My God. Y'all trying to get something started up in here. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you got to let people know what you hoping on. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir, Mike. I don't know when the last time I ever heard a piano played like that, boy, but you was all over them keys. Woo! My God. You better watch out. I feel a little something. I feel a little something, something, something. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, 
you're funny. They don't know. They don't know what he's done for you. I love him. Oh yeah. I love him. I really love him. Can you sing it together one more time? Come on. See everybody say, I really love the Lord. Say it one more time. I really love the Lord. You don't know what He done for me. You don't know what He's done for me. I should have lost, but He gave me the victory. He gave it to me. I love Him. Put your hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to pause for station identification. Thank you, choir, for letting God use you. We're so grateful to have uh, the the, le the leaders of this endeavor to begin a new charter school here in North Charleston, and and we applaud your mission statement, your goal, and what you want to do, we want to do. So I'm sure that we will support that and we'll get all the information to our 8 o'clock service where they can watch it on the live stream. Uh, but we'll make sure to get out. And there is a table set up in the lobby to my right, that for any of you that want to stop by and get further information, contact information, or any questions, 
that you have about the school so they will be out there a few minutes after the service. And if you keep acting up like this, we ought to be out at least by 4.30. <laughs> I made you smile. <laughs> amen, amen. Get your Bibles out, get your Bibles out. Joshua chapter 14. Joshua chapter 14. Remind everyone, we encourage you to participate in Bible study on Thursday night. We are streaming live on Zoom and on YouTube. We welcome those that are watching by YouTube and our website. And we pray that you remember to sow your offering. Put your seed into the ground. Amen. Don't look for a ship to come in if you never sent one out. You know how you can do it. You need to do it on the Lord's day. When it comes into your hand, don't give the devil a chance uh, to distract your mind. In Joshua chapter 14, if you have your Bible, say amen. If you're still looking, say help me, Lord. In Joshua chapter 14, the context of our sermonic text is that the children of Israel, because of unbelief, God allowed them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. It seemed kind of extreme, but God was teaching them and us a lesson that the longer you put off believing in God, the longer you're going to wander in the wilderness. Hey, raise your hand if you like me and you've spent some time in the wilderness. Amen. 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 Looking for stuff that wasn't there. All right. And now they have finally come out of the wilderness. An entire generation of them have died. Everybody over 40 years old has died in the wilderness except for two men. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people that have died and been buried in the wilderness because they didn't believe God could do what he promised except for two men. And now these two men and the younger generation are ready to come in and take the promised land as God has promised them. They're willing to believe they can do it. They look outnumbered. They don't have no weapons. They don't have no organized military. But God said they can take it, and now they're ready to go get it. And they got it. And they defeated army after army to the point that they now are in control of the territory. They own the territorial rights of hundreds of miles, square miles of promised land. And now Joshua, their leader, the one of the two that still live, is dividing up the land rights to the people, to this tribe, you get this land, to that tribe, you get this land. And that's what we come into our text, because the other old uh, OG that is still around with Joshua is a man named Caleb. Caleb and Joshua are still around because they are the only two out of the 12 member committee that went in the land to come back and give a report on whether they could take it or not. These two are the only two who said, we can do it. The other 10 who are now dead said it's too much. But now Joshua's in charge, second in command, Caleb. Caleb comes to Joshua with the unusual request about what he wants. In verse 5, Joshua 14, as the Lord commanded Moses, the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. 
Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kizizite, said unto him, You know the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, about me and you in Kadesh Barnea? I was 40 years old at that time when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent us into Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I and you brought him word again as it was in my heart that we could take it. Nevertheless, our other ten brethren that went up with us made the heart of the people afraid of the fight. But I followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day when I gave a good report, saying to me, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be yours to inherit and your children forever because you had followed the Lord your God 45 years ago. And now, verse 10, Caleb says to Joshua, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, for 45 years, ever since he spoke the word to Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now I am this day 85 years old. And I'm just as strong today that I was that day that Moses sent me in. As my strength was then, then, so is it now. I'm ready to fight, to go out and to come in with the victory. Now, therefore, Joshua, give me this mountain, the one that the Lord spoke to me in that day. For you heard in that day, how the Anakims, the giant people, lived on that mountain, 10 feet tall and taller. And their cities were big cities and walls surrounded the city. But if so be the Lord is with me, I should be able to drive all of the giants out. And Joshua blessed Caleb and gave Caleb, the son of Jephthah Hebron, the mountain for his inheritance. And I want to use for a subject, and I don't know who this is for, or what you trust in God to do, but I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord, give me this mountain. And for a subtitle, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Give me this mountain. Have you ever had to wait on the Lord a long time? <laughs> Anybody here right now waiting on the Lord to do something? And <laughs> Yeah, I see. I see. Raise your hand who I'm talking to. And, and, and you just believe he's going to do it. But you got faith. The word told you that he would do it, but you just don't see how he's going to do it. I, I, I don't know what you use to hold on when things get rough and tough, but, but, I, but I, I, I grew up in music. I'm a, I'm a music man, I, and, and I thank God when I'm about to give up on something, you know, and we all get to that place where you're about to give up on something in your life that you know God brought it into your life or God promised it into your life, but you don't have it yet, and you're about to give up on something. One of the, th one of the three things that keep me going, the main thing that keeps me going is the word of God. I can go to the word of God and encourage myself. You know, sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Sometimes I pre uh, listen to another preacher, and they'll preach a word. It seemed like their word was coming right at me. I had somebody tell me this morning after I preached the 8 o'clock service, they walked up on the pool, a young brother said, Pastor, I had to tell you, you preached to me today because that was the sermon I needed to hear. And a sermon, a sermon come to me, then a scripture. You ever been reading the Bible and sometimes a scripture just jump up and slap you upside the head and you, and you say, thank you, Lord, that's a scripture for me. But something else that always encouraged me is music. I thank God for Amazon music and and I got my music. My playlist is like the timeline of my life. You play a song, I can tell you what I was doing that year. Can I get away and turn to your neighbor and say, some songs I don't need to hear no more. 
turn off the lights. You, you, don't, you, 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 you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you, you, you don't need to revisit some old albums. That's all right. But, but, but my playlist, my playlist all the way to Earth 1 and 5 encourages me. If something about music, I hear that song, You Fight On. Amen. Get your sword in your hand. You fight on. And, and then I hear something from Earth 1 and 5. Keep your head to the sky. Those songs, I still got them on my playlist when I be working out in the morning and walking. I got one that I've got up from when I'm feeling tired. I got 10 songs from when I'm feeling good. I got 10 songs from when I'm feeling sad. But those songs, music has a way of encouraging you and encouraging you. And, and, and I don't know, when I look at our text, I don't know what it is that encourages Caleb. Caleb been in the wilderness 45 years with a people that it was their fault he was stuck with them because they didn't believe that God could do what he promised. 45 years of wandering, and not only him, but that younger generation had no houses, had no cars, had no driveways, had no closets, had no bank accounts. All they had was God. And for 45 years, they wandered in the wilderness, but now God has brought them out, and Caleb has come out with more than anyone could imagine. He had a desire for more. And I come to tell somebody that if you're with God, sometimes you got to realize that God has more for you than you can imagine. Is there anybody been without long enough that you're ready to say, I know God has more for me? Look what Caleb said. Caleb said, God has kept me alive. And I'm just as strong as I was when I started. It's good to have inspiration. He goes to Joshua with these people. Caleb stands out, and he asks what seems to be an unusual request. But when you've been waiting a long time, you want it all. Caleb said to Joshua, give me this mountain. He wanted a mountain, not, not, not a peaceful farmland, and not a beachfront property, but he wanted a mountain. It's hard enough to get up a mountain, but it was that there were giants on the mountain. There were giants on the blessing he wants. And let me share with somebody, and even with our new school charter people, that when you want it, if you want the blessing, expect the giants. If you got a giant prayer, you're going to have a giant problem <laughs> Turn to somebody, don't look for no small problems. As a matter of fact, I've lived long enough now when I got a big problem to me, that's confirmation that God got something big if I can go through it. Big problem. And, and you know, let me take a moment, because those of you who've been going with us through black history study, we took all the month of February to talk about people of color in the Bible. Then we took last month, which was Women's History Month, to talk about women of color in the Bible. And this guy, Caleb, you know, I think we ended up the discussion with a, a, a black sister, a Canaanite, a descendant of Ham, uh, named uh, Tamar. You remember Tamar? Tamar is the one who described, uh, disguised herself as a prostitute. Now, she was, she, was, she was a Canaanite, and she had, and she tricked Judah. Judah, Judah supposed to let his youngest son marry Tamar according to his traditional law because if he had two sons that had married Tamar and they had died. The first one married Tamar and he died after the, shortly after the wedding without a child. The second son married Tamar, this sister, and he died shortly after the wedding. Now, according to the Jewish law, if your brother died, and had a wife, and the wife didn't have a child, you had to marry her and give her a child so the child can inherit your older brother's inheritance. 
But when Judah saw that this woman, this sister, had married two of his sons and they both had died, he tried to hide his younger son. So he told Tamar, I let you have my son, my younger son, when he get old enough to marry you. But he had no intention. I'm talking about Judah, the same Judah, the tribe of Judah, that, that, that decided he had no intention of giving this woman his younger son. But the woman saw Judah wasn't going to act right. So what she did, she dressed up like a prostitute and stood on the corner. And here comes Judah with his holy self. Said, you know, she said, come to my house. He said, okay, okay. It couldn't pay her right. But she got pregnant by her father-in-law and had two twin boys. One of them were named Pharaoh. And if you read the text, Caleb is the grandson. He's the son of Pharaoh and the grandson of Judah. But he's a Canaanite. Judah was tricked by a Canaanite, a black person, who tricked him and had a son. So I want you to know, Caleb, I just try to infuse you with understand that we in the Bible too. All colors are in the Bible. Don't go by the movies you see out of Hollywood. But this guy named Caleb was second in command to Joshua, coming out of the wilderness. So Caleb goes to Joshua and said, give me the mountain. Now, 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 the mountain is full of giants, the Anakims. See, sometimes we read over text. I take a moment. I ain't going to preach. I ain't going to preach long this morning. But I, I want to take a moment to educate you on the history. Now, the Anakims. Who are the Anakims? Caleb said, you know, the, the mountains are full of the Anakims. The Anakims, and this may blow your mind, the Anakims are the descendants of fallen angels having sex with women. Mm -hmm. now, now, you'll find a little reference to this in, 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 in the book of Genesis chapter 5 that, that angels came down from heaven when God kicked them out and they looked at the women of men and had babies by the men, by the, by the women, and the babies came out to be giants. That was a breed of people that walked the earth over 10 feet tall, weighing over 400 pounds each that roamed throughout the world. These was the Anakims. These was the ancestors of Goliath. You remember Goliath was 10 feet tall? So this was a mountain full of giants. I'm talking about real giants. Supernatural, powerful giants. And here come Caleb saying, I want the mountain. But the problems are still on the mountain. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody right now. You can't give up on your dream because you see giants in front of your dreams. Every time there will be a blessing, there will be a problem. He said, give me the mountain. So now we get to a point that I want to explain and give you something to take home with you. Now, now how could Caleb come out to figure that he was able to control that mountain, to fight the problems? And you may be wondering, how can you fight the problem standing in front of your next blessing? Let's look at how Caleb had a mindset that he could do it. First of all, the first thing I see is that Caleb stands on the fact I can do it because I waited for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some of us give up and move on to something else, but I want to know is there anybody here that got a dream that you refuse to let go? If you want to achieve mountaintop experiences, you got to learn how to handle waiting in the valley of delayed expectations. You got to learn how to wait on it when it look like ain't nobody going to help you get it. Like you don't have the resources to get it. Just wait on the Lord. Nowhere in the Bible will you see anyone get a great blessing without a long wait. Caleb had to wait 45 years to get his mountain. Moses had to wait 80 years to lead the people out of Egypt. David had to wait 15 years to get on the throne of Israel. Joseph had to wait 13 years to get on the throne of Egypt. Job had to wait 39 chapters before God brought his healing. Abraham had to wait 25 years before he had his first child. Isaac had to wait 20 years before he had his first child. Me and my wife had to wait seven years before we had our child. Lazarus had to wait through sickness and he died and four days after the funeral before the Lord showed up to get him up. But I come to tell you, if you wait on the Lord, the Lord is, make, is able to make everything be all right. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but have you ever been in that valley of a delayed expectation? Didn't get the phone call back. The loan didn't go through. You tried everything you knew, but yet 
in that valley of delayed expectation. You had to still praise God. You had to still serve God while you're waiting. You still have to give your tithes and offering. But I come to tell you, they that wait, I feel like preaching, y'all gonna push me today. David said in Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He picked me up out of the pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet on a rock. He put a new song in my mouth. He put a new praise in my spirit. Many are going to see it and fear and trust in the Lord. What are you saying, David? David said, the Lord blessed me so good. After I waited on him, uh, that people looked at me and knew I didn't have it when they last saw me. But now I'm praising him and they're going to trust God. Look at your neighbor said, I'm going to be so high on the Lord. Somebody sitting by me going to get a contact. Y'all going to make me preach it like I really want to today. Where are all my praises at? I need the people that God blessed after you patiently. Waited on the Lord while they still laughed at you. While they still were talking about you. While they still were lying behind your back. But God showed up. And like he said for Lazarus, loose the man. How many know that when you wait on the Lord, like grandmama said, he may not come when you want him. But he'll always be on time. They used to sing a song, Caleb been in the wilderness, but he come out the wilderness looking for a blessing. They used to sing a song that said, how do you feel when you come out the wilderness? Feel like shouting, feel like praising, feel like trusting. David came back and said, wait on the Lord. And be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine soul. Well, David, not here today, but I come to encourage somebody waiting right now. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord, Jimmy Lee. Wait on the Lord, Tasha. Wait on the Lord, Jolitha. Wait on the Lord, Leroy. Wait on the Lord, Mary Sue and John Boy. Because God will do just what he said. I, I feel like preaching. Come, come here, Isaiah. I got some people still don't believe that waiting on the Lord will give you the power to take a mountain from a giant. What you got to say, Isaiah? Even the youth shall faint and get weary. And the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Wait on the Lord. Let me tell you something. I, I don't have time, but a couple of reasons. I, I cut some of the end off. But some of the reason Caleb had to wait. God had to get a bunch of people out of his life. Ah. Uh, he had about 300,000 people that, that didn't believe God could do what he said. See, you can, you, every now and then you got to check your circle. Because sometimes when you prophesy what God is going to do, some people ain't smiling. Touch your neighbor and say, if you ain't with what I'm with, I don't need you around me. God had to wait till some people died off. Some people butt out, some people got out, some people got put out, some people got left out until all of them had died. And God said, now I'm going to give it to you. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, sometimes what's holding you back is who you got on your side. God don't need no help. He can do it for you all. And God's not getting your blessing ready for you. He's getting you ready for your blessing. Caleb said, I can take that mountain, first of all, because I waited on the Lord. Secondly, Caleb said, I know I can take that mountain. Because when I woke up this morning, I've been in the wilderness 45 years. But I don't look like 
what I've been through. You know, you're sitting by somebody, they look so cute in church. Look at your neighbor and say, you look so cute and your hair so nice and your beard so pretty and your necktie matching your handkerchief. But baby, if the truth be told, you looking at some people, they just don't look like what they've been through. I wish I could get a few witnesses in here that if your neighbor knew what you've been through, they'll praise God that you still here. Somebody said, God did it. Caleb said, look at me. Caleb said, look at me. Caleb said, I'm 85 years old and I'm just as strong today that I was strong as strong back in the day. I can fight like I could fight then. I can run like I could run then. And he took that as confirmation that God had something better for him. And we need to do that. He said, he said right there in verse number 14 and 10, the Lord has kept me alive. See, see, some of us miss that. We take being alive as a gimme. That you are alive because you made all the right moves, you took all the right vitamins, you did all the right exercise. The devil is alive. You drunk stuff, you ain't know what they put in it. You driving with people crazy going 100 miles an hour. Come on, somebody. You know why you still here? Because the Lord kept you. I need all the kept people to give witness that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, that crazy boyfriend you had, that conniving girlfriend you had, that hating family that you had, don't you know you had some people that didn't even want to see you wake up? But every morning, God said, get up, my child. Somebody shout, there's more. So much more. Caleb said, I'm still here. I'm still here. Because the Lord has kept me alive. And listen, my people, if you survive everything Satan tried and you still here breathing, you still living, you still believing, you still expecting, stop walking around looking like what you've been through or what you're going through. Don't let the devil steal your joy. If you happy, notify your face so your face can get with the program. Look at your neighbor and say, show some joy. God kept you. God kept you. Don't look like when you go to a car lot to get a car, your car broke. Don't be walking out there like you begging. Like you looking for the worst thing, the cheapest thing. Well, I, I, just give me the cheapest thing you got. I, I, I know my credit ain't that. You know, they ain't going to get you. No, they're going to give you. They're going to give you that old raggedy car. Somebody just drove in there to trade in. And said, well, we can let you have that for 9000 at 14% interest. No, don't go in there. If you're going to go on a car lot to look for a car, walk on that car like, like you got some money. Walk on that car like, like you ain't here for no junk. People are not going to invest in you and you look like you a wreck yourself. You need to cheer up. Nobody going to trust you. Nobody, you, you looking like what you've been through or your last relationship. Ain't nobody going to date you and you looking like you a disaster about to happen. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, look like a million dollars. Beyonce ain't got nothing on you. She ain't never raised three children by herself. She ain't never had to pay rent out of her own pocket. Look like you know somebody. You do know somebody. His name is Jesus. Jesus, look like you got Jesus on your side. You need a house and, and the qualifying finance company hasn't come through. Don't wait till they come through. Get in your car. Drive to the neighborhood that you want to move into. And just drive around looking at houses. Say, I like that one. Tell God I like that one. You got to be like Caleb. You got to point out your mountain. Look at somebody who said, I like that one. And I'm a living witness. God will pick you up and take you from the outhouse.
to the White House. Somebody said, well, 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 you don't know my situation. How you going to preach to me to my God got more for me? I'm just going to sell it with what I got. I'm just going to live in the little, little money I got now. I ain't going to look for nothing else. I thank God for the little job I got now. It ain't paying much, but thank God. A girl, wake up. I'm not telling you to quit your job, but you ought to expect more. I know y'all are expecting that school to be full. Not only asking people to apply, but you're going to be in a position where you're going to have to turn people down that you don't have the room to take in yet. But God not going to give it to you till you expect it. Can I get a witness here? You got to expect God to turn things around. Somebody shot said, you got to expect it. There's more. And somebody said, Rev, well, Rev, how you know there's more for me? Uh, you don't know my situation. You don't know what my past, you don't know what kind of giants I got coming against me. Well, I know God got more for you. You know how I know it the same way Caleb knowed it. He got more for you because he woke you up this morning. He woke you up. That's confirmation. Don't you realize if God woke you up, that means there's more? Somebody shout more. God said, I know my plans for you. Plans to prosper you. Yeah, not hurt you. Plans to bring you to an expected end. Well, let me hurry along. He knew he could win because he waited. He knew he could win because he still didn't look like what he'd been through. And lastly, uh, he told Joshua. He said, I'm strong. I'm young looking. But those things don't mean nothing to a giant. Your strength don't frighten the devils blocking your blessing. But the last thing he told Joshua, he said, yeah, I'm strong. Yes, I've waited. I got waiting power. But then he said, and if the Lord be for me, I shall overcome the giants. I'm going to stop right there. But how many know if the Lord be for you? Nobody can stand against you. Every giant uh, has got to fall. Uh, yeah, your looks can't do it. Your pedigree can't do it. Your title can't do it. Your education can't do it. I'm talking about things greater than you deserve to have. There are giants in the mix that you can only get through them if God be on your side. Yeah, you can't stand against the giants will stand against your progress and your success. But if God be for you, no giant can keep you back. That giant called racism, that giant called sexism, that giant called jealousy, envy, shut doors, lowered ceilings, that giant called sickness, that giant called past mistakes, that giant called an arrest record. That giant called jail time. That giant called family hate. That giant called church gossip. That giant called single parent income. Fake friends. Spiteful exes. Other people's opinion. That's a big giant. But I come to tell you if God be fire, you can walk over every giant to possess your mountain. Do I have a witness here? I need about five people. Well, I just need four people. I'll be five. That people tried to block you from getting where God had for you. They tried to block you so bad that you didn't think you can have it. But God stepped in and prepared a table before your enemies in their presence. Won't he do it? Say yes. Say yeah. Somebody shout, give me my mountain. Give me my breakthrough. Give me my house. Give me my business. Give me my building. Give me my finances. Give me my healing. Give me my all. Bless my children. I'm talking about won't mountains now. Fix me, Lord. Fight my battle. 
on the job. Fight my battle in my finances. Fight my battle in my body. Fight my battle against every giant that come against me. The Bible says in the end that Caleb got his mountain and he started a city called Hebron, which was one of the greatest cities in the promised land. He whipped every giant. He took one hit and the Lord gave the second hit and every giant had to fall. Shake your neighbor's hand and said, in my life, I've seen giants fall. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I would amount to nothing. But I thank God that if God be with you, you can get through it. I got through that and I'll get through this. Give me my mountain. Well, let me hurry up and close. A mountain is a very precious piece of territory. Because on a mountain, uh, you can rise up above everything coming at you. On a mountain, uh, you can see where the enemy is coming. On a mountain, uh, many soldiers met God uh, on a mountain. Uh, I heard King say, I've been to the mountaintop. And I've seen the promised land. When you get on the mountain, you can help other people come up the mountain. When you get on the mountain, you can see more than you can see in the valley. That's why I like mountains. When you look in the Bible, there are many mountains. There's the mountain called Sinai. It was on the mountain Sinai that God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. There's the Mount Carmel. It was on the mountain called Carmel uh, that Elijah challenged the 450 false prophets and answered them by fire. It was in the Mount of Olives that Jesus prayed to sweat came down like blood. It was on Mount Zion. Uh, it's in the city called Jerusalem. They built Jerusalem on Mount Zion. It's Mount Tabor. You remember Mount Tabor? That's called the Mount of Transfiguration. Where Jesus met Moses and Elijah and talked about the future. Mount Nebo, good God Almighty, is where Moses was lifted by God to look over and see the promised land. There's Mount Moriah, where Abraham offered his son Isaac, but God didn't let him kill him. There's Mount Ararat, after the flood uh, that God set the ship that Noah had built safely on dry land. Mountains are great places. I like to visit mountains. I like pictures of mountains. Uh, mountains are prized territory. But you know one thing I like that is better than a mountain? It's a hill. Good God Almighty. It's not as big as a mountain, but it's more important than a mountain. I'm talking about a hill that sat right outside Jerusalem. Some people call it Golgotha, but Grandmama called it Calvary. A hill called Calvary stood an old rugged cross the emblem of my suffering and shame but it was at that cross my friend Jesus paid the cost to wash my sins away is there anybody here that knows something about Calvary look at somebody and said I'm so glad that the Lord gave me Calvary give me Calvary because at Calvary at Calvary, all my sin, all my sin were washed away. Calvary is the door to your achievement. Calvary is the doorway 
that gives you the right to ask God what you desire. And the Bible said the Lord will give the righteous the desires of their heart. Sometimes we pray for something, and I thank God looking at, look at us and say, that ain't big enough. Go ask your sister for that. <laughs> Be like Caleb. Give me my mountain. I know it's going to be some problems to get it, but I'm ready. Well, how you know you're ready? He woke me up early this morning. I'm still in my right mind. I still got a song in my heart. How many know there's more? How many know there's more worth living for? Look at somebody last time and say, don't give up. There's more. If you want it, This is for somebody. We're going to open the door of the church. There's always a problem to fight you from the promise. God promised to heal you. The cancer don't want that to happen. Sometimes the medicine makes you sick. God promised to open doors for you. And you walk up to the door and don't see a doorknob. He is the doorknob. Jesus was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. But they put a stone there. And he didn't move it, Reverend. He told the people, roll away the stone. When Jesus rose from the grave on the third day, the most mean Romans rolled a stone to block the entrance of the tomb. Not to keep Jesus in there, he was already gone. But they put the stone there so you couldn't see he had did what he promised to do. If we move the stones out the way, jail record, prison time, past mistakes, gossip, low self-esteem, not believing in yourself, not like Caleb. I'm like Caleb. If anybody ought to believe in you, it ought to be you. I am somebody. Oh, I know I got a 45-year wilderness past. But guess what? The Lord brought me out. And I want more. And I can't give up now. I can't give up now. And I know somebody, this message is for somebody. That in your heart you hear the Lord speaking. Get your mountain. Your life not over. You still got chapters left in your life book. You can't shut up the book while you still breathing. You got another chapter. Job was sick. 39 chapters. 39 chapters. He was just sick. Couldn't do nothing. But then when they got to chapter 40, the Bible said God showed up in a whirlwind. I said, get up, Job. I'm sick of you looking at you down here complaining. And the Bible said, Job got up healed. And had more children and more wealth. This word is speaking to somebody. If you get up, God will match your move. If everybody stand to your feet. The reason I'm down here, I'm waiting for somebody to come right now. We're going to open up the door of the church. 
It's time to come back home. It's time to let the Lord have your future. If you are not ashamed of him, watch what he'll do for you. Y'all sing the song. Come on. Come on, my dear. You just the first one. Somebody else coming. Somebody else coming. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Come on. Come on. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. I come too far from Give me my mountain. I've been in the wilderness too long. Nobody told me the road would be easy. Somebody else need to come. God is saying you need to come back to the church. You need to come back to the church. Don't just be at church. Be in church. Come on. I just can't give up now. If he woke you up, there's more. I'm too far from where started. I'm trusting God for somebody else. Come on. Nobody told me. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, I know. I don't believe he brought me Mike sang that song, There's More. I'm alive. This is for somebody. I'm alive. Raise your hand and say, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Well, why are you alive? alive? Why are you alive? Because there's more. And Accident. You're not alive by accident. accident. I'm alive because, because there's more. That's for somebody. Come on. I'm alive. You could have been dead. I'm alive. But God got more I'm for you. Alive. I'm alive. Just wave your hand if you thank Him. It's not an accident. It's not an accident. I'm alive. I'm alive. Because there's more. Sing it one more time. Come on, come on. I'm alive. I'm alive. Sing quiet. I'm alive. I'm alive. It's not an accident. And it's not an accident. This is not an accident. I'm alive. Because it's more. Sing it real softly, everybody. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. And this is not a accident. I'm alive because there's more. If there's somebody else need to come up here real quick, come on. Come on. You can come as a candidate to be baptized. If you've already been baptized, you can just come to be a part of our church family. Come on, come on. This, oh, give God some praise for the young man. If he can do it, you need to do it. Walk to your mountain. Come on. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. And let the devil know this is not. An accident. This is not no, accident. I could have died, but I'm alive, I'm alive. because, because it's more. I'm alive, I'm alive, yeah, I'm alive, I'm alive. Yourself. 
This is not no accident. Accident. I'm alive. Because. Amen. Deacon White. If he calls your name, raise it. Raise your hand so we see. We have three coming from baptism. We have Mr. Riley Bennett. Asia Sampson. And Shante Kunsay. We have two coming from Christian Experience. Kelsey Horry. And Kanye Johnson. Praise the Lord. We have five coming to be a part of our church family. Three coming as candidates for baptism. Two have already been baptized and are being led to become a part of our church family. You've heard that request. What's your pleasure to that request? Motion and property second that we accept that request into our church family as candidates for baptism and the two on Christian experience. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Any opposed to say nay, the eyes have it, give God some praise. Hallelujah. This is a life-changing moment, I'm a witness. Deacon Thompson and Deacon White will lead you, those five names that will call right to that door, right to the door to the left, so we can finish up the admin work and thank God for you. Amen, amen. You may be seated. We're going to close now, but we close with an altar prayer. I always believe that, see, the devil is going to be waiting on you as soon as you get out the door. But if you have something that you want to leave at the altar in prayer before you depart, I want you to come on to the altar now. We're going to get a benediction up here, but if you need to, come on. Yeah, those with the charter school, y'all come up here on the front row. Because you need a special anointing to deal with our children. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's not... Point to yourself and say, and this, point to yourself, I'm not an accident. <laughs> God kept me alive. And I'm going to lift up a special prayer concerning the, the issues in the Middle East. Because you know I'm a student of prophecy. And Ezekiel prophesies that in the last days, even nations that did not want to fight Israel, God said, I'm going to make the Armageddon come because God said, I'm going put to put a hook in your jaw and draw you to battle. I hope, I hope he wasn't talking about a miracle. It seemed like we had been put in the middle of the Middle East conflict. So we're going to pray for peace, the peace of Jerusalem. And we're going to pray for the Palestinian people who are starving, who have no home, who have no home to go to, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And for the leadership of Israel, that they may acknowledge God and Jesus Christ at some point and realize that they that live by the sword shall also die by the sword.
And we want to pray for our military people, our men and women. How many of you know somebody in the military? Wow, that's over there in that conflict. I told them this, this morning, I was in the Navy and we was over there doing a, the Beirut conflict and I was on a ship. And you know, shipboard life is pretty natural. But when you go to battle zone for long periods of time, put on your gas mask and all of those things and the enemy shooting drones and you're in danger. And a lot of those over there are our young brothers and sisters now. They got women on the battleships. And they need to know that somebody praying for them. So I ask that you bow your heads and bow your hearts and shut your eyes. Father God, we come. First, we want to thank you. Thank you for your word the, that inspires us and encourages us and deliver us from the bondage of our own mind that reminds us that all things are possible to them that believe. And God, we thank you for salvation. We ask now that you would cleanse us of all iniquity and all sin by the power that's in the blood of the Lamb. May it wash us afresh. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we'll be able to walk in the light and love people whether they love us or not let your spirit move in us God I don't know what your children are asking for at the altar but I know whatever they need you able you able to turn it around you able to open the door you able to fix it Somebody might have a child hundreds of miles away, but in the name of Jesus, put your hand on them. Thank God for mama's prayer, for grandmama's prayer. Make a difference today, Lord. Oh, we pray for the soldiers, the military that are over in the Middle East, the Navy, the Army, the Air Force, the SEAL team, the pilots that got to fly missions over hostile territory. Put your angels in charge of it. Be in front of them. Block out what they miss. Bring them home safely. They got family waiting on them. They got children waiting on them. We know prayer changes, saying. We pray for peace. Give those in decision-making positions a mind for peace. Bring it to resolution, oh God. Give us more time on the clock. We got so many more souls that need to be saved. Father, we pray for these that have stepped forward for a new charter school in times like these. We need them, Lord. Keep them on one accord. Don't let them get discouraged. I love the team spirit I see in them today. Keep them team spirit wise. Maybe they can't all be in the same place, but that's why you let Zoom be invented. Microsoft team and committee, they can meet, talk it out, work it out. Follow your leadership. Touch young lives. The first student in your school may be a future president, no matter how unpresidential they act. Make it your mission to steer them in the right direction with love and compassion. Father, bless this house. Keep us in your will. Keep us in your will. We pray.
bless the choir and all those that serve, the musicians, the ushers, the parking lot attendants, sound room. For God, you sure enough showed up today. And like Caleb said, we can't do it without you. So now take us to our next destination and watch over us. Keep us safe. Make this a good day. A good day to be saved. And may somebody know we've been to church by the way we treat people. Now may God keep you, and whatever you ask for, he can do more than that. Walk like you know it. Live out the difference in Jesus' name. God bless you. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. The charter school team will be in the lobby to my right at the table set up. If you have any questions, I want to make further contact. If you got children, this is important. If you got a daughter with children, if you got a niece with children, if you got grandchildren,